Go Tigers 247 sat down with four-star class of 2021 guard Jordan Nesbitt in early December while he was in Memphis for the Iverson Classic to give Tigers fans their first in-depth look at Nesbitt and what drives him on a daily basis. All right, Jordan, so first thing, I want to talk about your journey mm -hmm. in basketball and kind of where it started. So for you, where did the love of the game start? Uh, really, um, growing up when I was little, uh, my pops kind of instilled the ball in me since, uh, since I was three. And growing up, I always played with his team. I never really played with like no other club, anything like that. So he always had the ball in my hands and making sure that I not wouldn't be no center or nothing like that. Like he wanted me to make sure I'd be a big guard. Okay, so with your with your dad being such a big influence, how mm -hmm. cool was that for you? You know, having him along the mm -hmm. way and having him push you. Real cool. You know, a lot of people don't. You know, a lot of people don't have that. A lot of people don't have fathers in their life. So it was really a blessing for me to have my pops in my life the whole step of the way. So yeah. Can't and I I know you said you you know he wanted you to be a guard, to be mm -hmm. a ball handler, yeah. and not have to play down low. Yeah. How cool was that for him to do that for you? Because most teams would have put you down mm -hmm. low and made you go play on the block, yeah. but he allowed you to play with the ball in your hands. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really, really crazy because he kind of seen the game changing before like any else people did. Because I got a lot of friends back home that, you know, they like same size as me, but they playing like power forward and center and stuff like that. So it's kind of not working out for him. So yeah, he kind of seen it before anybody else did, really. So it's a blessing. And what were some of the things that he instilled in you? Because obviously, you know, basketball, he helped you out a lot. But what were some of the character traits that he pushed hard on you in life? Really just working hard. You know, I, I always see him work hard. He, three jobs. He always early mornings, late nights coming home. So he really installed that working hard and just having a good character, always showing love to anybody, never treating nobody wrong. Just he showed me the way as growing up. So got to take on now and hold that family name forever. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm sure a lot of Memphis fans have noticed mm -hmm. watching your film and stuff, the mentality that you bring to the game. Mm -hmm. You're always fired up. You're mm -hmm. always talking. You're always going at people. Where does it, where does that come from for you? Uh, I'll probably say when I was playing with uh, WACG, uh, the AAU team that's in Memphis, you know, uh, Coach Carlos, he kind of, he was kind of like a trash talker. He always talking trash before the game, clapping every time, be like 20 piece. So I kind of got that from him. And it's just like, he kind of instilled that. Like dog, I always had it, but it's like when I met him, it's kind of like really came out. Like he really showed me a love and passion for the game is also as well. So big shout out to him too. Coach Carlos for sure. So you said it's already, it's always been there. The mm -hmm. dog's always been there. Yes, how, you know, how natural is it now when you're on the floor to just, to just say what's on your mind and, and be free out there? It's, it's, it's really just, it's a really natural thing. I don't even, like, I don't even be sometimes, like, when I be talking trash and stuff, sometimes it just come out, like, already. Like, I don't even be thinking about it. I just already know what to say. It's crazy. <laughs> And then I want to talk about the big guard stuff because that's, you know, we've talked about it. That's a big movement mm -hmm. now where, mm -hmm. you know, the bigger guys are handling the ball and bringing the ball off the floor. Mm -hmm. How perfect of a scenario is it for you to, to kind of be playing in this modern age where it's acceptable? Because like you said, you would have been down low or playing yeah. the three and the four in yeah. high school and potentially in college. And now you have, you know, the, the, the ability to, to mm -hmm. handle the ball. Yeah, it's really a blessing, you know, like. Being able to be six seven and can bring the ball up on the floor and be able to come off the screen, pick and roll, and make plays for others, you know, that's what I really love to do. You know, I really love to create for others. You know, I love to score as well, but my first thing is always to make sure that my teammates eat. So for sure. So that's an, you just mentioned unselfishness and, mm -hmm. and getting teammates involved. Do you think that's another thing that that kind of came from your dad and what he did for you, or is that something that's always been there for you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I would definitely say it kind of came from my dad. You know, when I was growing up. He, I was always playing with his team, so sometimes we couldn't get all the, you know, the best talent in the world because they was always going to like bigger programs and stuff like that. So he always installed in me like, no matter who you playing with, always try to make your teammates better because in the long run, it's gonna be players that's just as like good as you. So it's gonna work out perfectly. So yeah. 
Do you think that was a blessing for you? Because some yeah. guys grow up yeah. playing with the best players in the country, yeah. and they and it's they kind of get spoiled of yeah. passing it to guys that are gonna go play high high level college basketball or in the NBA. Yeah. And you, like you said, you had to grind with some guys mm-hmm. that that weren't necessarily as talented. So, mm-hmm. how much of a blessing was it to kind of to kind of come up like that? It was real, it was a real real blessing. You know, I didn't really see it when I was little. Growing up, I used to I used to get mad when we used to lose to like bigger programs and stuff because I always wanted to win. Like I'd be doing good, but we didn't get the win, so I never really liked it. So, but as time goes on, I seen it more. I really love how he put the ball in my hands and made me play with less of comp- I mean, not less competition, but less of players that was at my speed and level, so that way it could help me in the future, like now. So yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I know you you moved schools uh, early on in high school Mm -hmm. and how much did that help you because I know that was a tough time and we'll get into that a little bit but how much did you know kind of changing schools and and resetting your mindset help you in that time well yeah um, to start off when I was at high school I was at Lutheran North uh, and that year me my freshman year coming in my eighth grade year my mom passed so a lot of people didn't know that so it was kind of it was kind of a rough two years for me I wasn't really doing good in schools, getting in trouble and stuff like that. So we had to do a little change of scenery. My pops, he wanted to do a little change of scenery. So that's when I found St. Louis Christian and they helped me out, you know, they reclassed me, made sure I got back on the right path. And so it's really a blessing. I really love St. Louis Christian. They really put me on the map and really helped me. So, yeah. How did you have to refocus mentally in that time? Because obviously that's mm-hmm. that's a terrible thing and a yeah. tra- tragic mm-hmm. thing to have to deal with. So. What what did you say to yourself, or what was the moment when you realized, okay, I gotta I gotta change what I'm doing if I want to achieve this goal of mine? Really, just uh, I say more so my pops. You know, sometimes he he let me just breathe and even on my own, but he always helped me with it because he was also having the same troubles as well because his mom passed. So he was kind of helping me take my steps with it as well, helping me. It's kind of rough, you know. We we had a lot of trials and tribulations, but definitely here today so we good so and what, what was his advice during that time because like you said he was going he's been through a similar situation mm-hmm. so there was common ground mm-hmm. there so what was his advice to kind of help bring you along and encourage you in that time that everything you know not everything happened for a reason but certain stuff happens and it changes you and make you stronger so you just gotta stay with it and be strong-minded so for sure and you you just said it you know it changes you and it mm-hmm. makes you different how did that change you how did that change your goals your mindset and the, yeah. and the way you approach life every day it really it really changed me with basketball because it really take me more serious like I really want to get on my, my stuff you know so and it's just like in life as well you know don't take nobody for granted because you never know so sure and you know a lot of times when when players and people in general mm-hmm. have hardships and have things to overcome mm-hmm. it not only refocuses them, but it makes every day, it makes every game, it makes every practice sweeter. Did you did you experience that at all? What you, what you mean, like? Like, so, you know, you just said you don't take people, you don't take things for mm-hmm, granted. Did mm-hmm. it kind of change your mindset on the way you approached everyday life? Yeah, because a lot of people used to um, start out my first two years. A lot of people used to say I had a bad attitude and I had bad body language, but really people ain't know what was going on. So it was just like, it wasn't really like I was trying to, it was just it was just a mental thing. I had to learn, I had to grow. So now it was like, you know, I'm I'm a very, 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 very different mindset. So I, it kinda helped me. So yeah. So is it crazy to you kinda looking back on it now that you've turned mm-hmm. such a negative thing into a positive, not only uh, on the basketball court, because I know it drives you and, that, and it gives you motivation. But as a person, like you said, it it changed you and it molded yeah. you into who you are today. Yeah, it definitely it definitely changed me. Cause Starting out, I was really kind of affecting my game when I had like a bad attitude, mental lapse. It was kind of really affecting my game. But now, you know, when like stuff don't go my way and stuff like that, I'm always clapping, picking up guys or like if guys ain't scoring or something like that. I'm always still trying to find them, lift them up because at the end of the day, nobody perfect. So make sure everybody's straight for real. 
And how much do you think that helps your teammates? Because there are some players that are very hard on their mm -hmm. teammates when they make small mistakes. And mm -hmm. it sounds like you don't really sweat the small things anymore. Mm -hmm. You kind of just move on to the next place. Yeah. So how much do you think that helps teammates? Uh, I really feel like it helps out a lot because, you know, they can be comfortable around me. They can they feel like they can play freely. It's okay to make mistakes. You know, everybody ain't perfect. Because I mean, I make mistakes. I still got a lot of work to do. So, I mean, it's, it's really blessed for real. So, yeah. do, you en do you enjoy being that guy that kind of brings the team together and is like, I don't want to say glue guy because you, you hear the phrase the glue guy all mm -hmm. the time and it's typically a guy that's not as big of an impact on the floor. It's yeah. the leadership and the off the floor, but it's like you're a glue guy, but you're also the star player of the mm -hmm. team. So uh, what, what's what's that like for you being, being that guy for your teammates? Uh, it's really natural. I mean, that's how, that's how it's always been my whole life. Whatever team I was playing with, I always been to try to be the leader and the glue guy. You know, sometimes sometimes growing up, I ain't really show it as much, but as I, as I got older and get more, I really show it now. So yeah. And then kind of transition into college and, and what's up coming. I know you still have mm -hmm. the rest of your season to go and, and obviously you're focused on that right now, but yes, how excited are you for the future and, and getting to college and getting to Memphis? Man, I, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm ready to I'm ready to show out for M Nation. I can't wait. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to turn up for sure, definitely. Sure. And, and why was it Memphis? Well, I, I know you had a lot of schools involved, and I think it came down to Memphis, Illinois, and St. Louis. So, mm -hmm. what was it about Memphis that that made you think, okay, this is where I want to spend my college career? Really, just the culture and just you know the guys they bring in. They bring top level guys in, and just having Coach Penny, like a big guard that he you know, already Hall of Famer, he know how to you know play the game of basketball. So he's gonna teach me a lot of things, and it's gonna help me on getting on the next level. And I feel like this is kind of an overused question now, mm -hmm. so I really don't even like asking it anymore. But I know it's it's part of the reason why you chose Memphis mm -hmm. is because you and Penny, similar body styles, yeah. similar size, similar, similar skill set. Yeah. Uh, how much did that factor into your recruitment? That factored in a lot, you know. Having a coach that kind of play the same way as you and they can teach you things, you know, it kind of it's kind of way better than, not saying like, Another coach ain't doing it, but it's just like it's better when you got a coach that played it and you know he didn't did it already. So it's kind of it's kind of a blessing. So I can't wait. Is there any specific conversation or anything like that that you can point to with Penny where you said, okay, this is this is a coach that's gonna ride with me regardless of what happens? Uh, I'll probably say uh, it was like I want to say it was like three or four days before I committed. Uh, I'm not really sure, but. He was on, a, I think he was like at a little golf tournament or something. And he got off the golf tournament just to like, just to do a little Zoom with me. And it was the whole staff and him. And I just kind of like opened my eyes like, oh, okay, he really, he really wanted me to go there. So I was just like, man, I'm gonna do it. Like, I got to, so for sure, yeah. So what do you think it's gonna be like playing for a guy that um, you're similar to, or you were, you know, similar to when he played, but also mm -hmm. showed how much he cares about, about you coming and joining yeah, the team? I, th I think it's gonna be very exciting. I really can't wait. Like. I'd be talking, I'd be thinking about that all the time. I really can't wait to turn up. So. And then we've we've talked about it. Uh, the St. Louis and the Memphis culture seem to be pretty mm -hmm. similar. The people seem to be pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, that working class, the hard nosed people. Mm -hmm. uh, how how easily do you think that transition is going to be for you to to come to Memphis and to be accepted by the fan base? Uh, I, I feel like it's going to be real real easy for me because the simple fact. Uh, I was playing with WHG, that's a, that was a Memphis organization, so it was like I was already, you know, getting to know kind of Memphis people. And Memphis people really just act like St. Louis people, you know, kind of the same. So it's going to be a very natural transition for me. So I know you still got a few months until you get on campus, but what are some of the things that, that you're looking forward to the most about, about playing in Memphis? Uh, really just meeting new guys and different scenery, you know really growing up now is getting ready for the next level and getting ready to hopefully achieve my dream and become an NBA player. So yeah, I can't wait. And I know you've uh, you've obviously paid attention to the team. You know the kind of scheme they run offensively mm -hmm. and defensively. How perfectly do you think you fit into that? I think I fit in well. I feel like 
the plays and the way they play, I feel like they let them play freely. And I feel like my game is freely where I can make plays for others. Like I'm a real big playmaker. So I feel like that's going to help me right away in college. So on the defensive end, they play extremely aggressive. Yeah, they do. I, I love defense. I play defense all day. So that's going to definitely help as well. I'm a dog on defense. Yeah, if you've seen Jordan Nesbitt on tape, you know he <laughs> likes to play defense. Yes, um, so they like to turn team over. They mm -hmm. like to get in transition. Yeah. They like to play fast. Do you think that highlights your best abilities? Yeah, definitely. I definitely do. I feel like that definitely highlights my best to be playing defense and being able to be a playmaker. So it's like I'm basically playing both ends. So yeah, it's definitely gonna highlight my game, for sure. So you're already signed, mm -hmm. you got a few more months, high school ball, and then you start gearing up and getting ready to go to college. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the message for Memphis fans? They got a few months to wait, so what's the message before you get there? Coming to, like, I'm coming to Memphis to be a lottery pick and we're winning a national championship. We, we are, I believe so. Like, I feel like we got the best recruiting class. Like, I feel like we just underrated. Like, I feel like we just underrated. Like John, best shooter in the class. I know y'all seen Josh. Josh is big guard, 6'9". Come on, man. ain't nobody running. Sam, look, dude, it's a big, big dude. You know what I mean? Like, and me, I'm gonna make sure we, I'm gonna make sure we all eat. I don't feel like nobody in the country can guard me, so I'm gonna make sure I do whatever it takes to win. So, I feel like we're gonna put on the show. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna be like the Fat Five. Remember what I said? Not Fat Five, my fault, Fat Four.